welcome to another lesson of uh, Professor Irvin's uh, lessons here of, of uh, artificial intelligence. Right here, I have my uh, hot cocoa, and my cat is somewhere here. And uh, welcome to part two. My fellow students. Now, if you want to watch, now if you want to watch uh, part one, I highly recommend it. So you can just, uh, follow along where we're at. And if you don't mind me, I also got this uh, special drink. I shall not be named. Yeah. Figure it'll give me a little booster of confidence. Oof, man, that's... Mmm. Tastes like cinnamon. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Cinnamon plus hot cocoa. It's a good mixture. Mmm. Hot cocoa to keep me warm. And my special medicine to, uh... Give me the confidence. Quote unquote. Mm. Man, that's good. Alright. Now where was I? Where's my fucking pen? My digital pen? Okay. Now, uh, this part two is going to be about things that are uh, that are human as compared to artificial intelligence true AI things like we're going to dis discuss about get my pen here uh, 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 uh. okay maybe there's no pen here oh right, here it is what's it do oh wait uh, <laughs> I got it backwards uh, I got my digital power backwards alright we're going to talk about art and then we're going to talk about traditions and then last part we're going to talk about randomness now these three are related to what's to be human as compared to machine now You want machines to be more human because I personally believe pure logic is not the answer. Pure logic is boring. And if a machine knows these three traits of sorts, maybe they'll spit out something that's better than we can do. Let's get more, uh, let's see here. Flavor. Actually, I'm putting another page. These three things I'm going to discuss about gives life flavor. And what I mean by flavor? Well, it's like, uh, you know, how a colorblind person cannot see colors? Well, a black, well, a monochromic colorblind person. You know how they can't see colors? Well, a person with colors has flavor. They can see different kinds of colors. They can see like red, and they can see blue, and they can see yellow. Flavors. They can see different flavors of sorts. It kind of it adds flavor to what you're experiencing, what you're experiencing of you know, it's out of your stimuli. As composed to a as opposed to a colorblind person who sees only one color. He doesn't see these. He only sees this. But if he sees these three, it's adding a little flavor to the world. It, uh, it adds, well, yeah, flavor. Kind of like the taste buds. It has things that are sweet, sour, like this cock go is warm and sweet and makes me comfy. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't taste because I don't have COVID yet. And uh, without the taste of co- cocoa, it's going to taste bland. Well, that's what logic is. Logic is kind of bland. But with taste, it adds flavor. It adds uh, a unique experience. And it's sweet. And tasty. That's flavor. Life is all about adding flavor. And AI, I think, they should experience flavors too. You get me? All right. Is that uh, in our page? All right, the first topic we're going to discuss about is uh, art. Now, what's the difference between a machine, put A, M, and man, uh, put that for M, is that when it comes to art, see, back in the day, I didn't understand art. Back in the day, I thought art was just incoherent drawing crapness that just nonsensical they made no sense i thought art was like like a photocopy you know like the better you draw you know the more realistic it is like a photocopy of sorts but that's as i slowly learn about art it's not what that really is art is like uh i'll put this an example like, art is like, I'm growing a brain fart. I was about to have it. Uh, oh, yeah. Art is like, uh, you know, okay. Here's an example. This is me drawing a, yeah, I'm going to add another page. See? This is me drawing a stick figure. It's a person. My strokes and the way I draw this, this person, this, rep- this uh, representation of this person, is coming from my mind, translating into uh, art. It's my strokes. This has come from my mind to you. That's being represented by my mind. What's this represented as a person? It's. Does that make sense? It's like each person's strokes, the way they draw is, well, it's, it's them. It's, it's that person. You're looking into that person's mind. The way, the, the, the way they draw, the way, the, way uh, the styles, the way they draw, the way it's represented. It's like their mind's translation into paper. It's like reading inside their minds in a way that's represented the symbol here. That's kind of like what art is, if I explain that well enough. Whereas, uh, what do you got? A, uh, like a realistic painting. Here. Oh, I know. Let's go to the web. Little web, little web, little web. Okay. Let's go Google real quick. I'll show you an example. Uh. Oh, I don't know. Uh, realistic photo. Yeah, not good enough. Not good enough. Okay, I don't want human faces. I want realistic photo. Let's say a building. Uh, yeah, here's one. Here's an example. Okay, well, bad, bad example. Let's see if I can. Can I? Can I? Can I where, where did? I, which one did I click at? Oh, okay. Here it is. See, it's kind of more realistic. It's like a almost a photocopy, but not quite. I mean, it's still someone's 
drawing of the representation of a drawing of their mind. See, see the way he draws the strokes, the way he did it, the shades, how he did it, the detail, all that matters. Whereas something that's like, let's say this, let's say someone draws this. This is like, like it's good. I mean, it's like perfect, but it's just what that's just what that is. It's just a, it's like you know, it's just a copy. Basically, you're like, who cares if he drew it so realistically as, you know, as perfect as possible? That's that's just a copy and paste. It's kind of hard to explain. But whereas this particular art, let's look at a, let's go like a dolly, like this. No! I just want to see the fucking picture! Oh, Etsy. Man, fuck that. Uh, okay. Like this. It's not realistic, but it's just someone's mind being represented into paper. What you're seeing is it's how his mind works. How, what he interprets the world of sorts. His stimuli that's been excited what they're seeing in the real world that goes into his mind in his mind to the drawing what you're seeing of what he what, what the way he sees the world of sorts. Like how his mind interpreted the, the world and his reality. So you got the you got the clock how it's like stretched like what does it mean stretched and look at the way he, uh look at the shades look at the details the details are important too his mind he wants you to see these kind of details just the way he wants it to be the way he wants to represent to see what you're seeing even like yeah even the kids drawing that's all shitty that's still his mind that you're looking like the way he kind of sees in the world, you know, the way, the way he, you know, how they, the way he drew the shitty face and the shitty legs. Like, like, why did he draw it that way? <laughs> I'm starting to notice it's, it's kind of hard to explain, which brings up to my next topic here in a little bit called tradition. I'll show you that, what I mean. See Dolly? Look at that. Look at this picture here. Okay. Look at that. Isn't it cool? Look at this represented here. It's not, it's not random. Pat, see, there's another random that I'm going to talk about topic. No, there's, there's order. There's order in this, in this drawing. There's a reason why the way he drew, he drew. See the strokes. See the way he, and the way he drew this the little lines. All the details are important. There's a reason why he drew it this way. It's not a photocopy of something. It's it is something that is made from his mind, his mind, to the pen, to the drawing on the paper, and what you're seeing. It's it's kind of like into his into his mind, his brains, the way he thinks, the way he sees the world. The way he interprets the world, how his mind interprets the world, this his stimuli, his stimuli, his vision. If he can draw smell, he probably would. If he can, if he can draw noise, he probably would too. Or maybe he has drawn noise. I mean, he draw the stretch time thingy. I mean, that's related to time, like time slowing, maybe. Or maybe it just looks fucking cool. Let's look at another example. Uh, Picasso. Come on, I just want to see... F no! What the fuck? No, oh, man. What'd I do that for? <laughs> That's for P. Look at that. Same here. Look at this. 
I know this is a, you know, so it's like more realistic here at a young age, and it gets more, more abstract. I think that's what I'm looking for. It's abstract, and this one gets all like even more abstract. It's getting more a little, a little non-realistic. But yet there is order. It's it's not random. This is the way he wanted to draw that, that way. It's pretty cool. This is his mind interpreting. This is him telling the world this is the way I want to draw it. This is what I want you to see. To interpret. This one's pretty cool too. Check this out. Look at them titties here. See, I think I... See, before, I thought this is all, this is all nonsense. I was like, why are you drawing this way? It looks like shit. I wrote like this. I was like, oh, see, see. This, but this is more realistic. Right here. Check this out. But I love these now. Since I able to mostly understand art. I love it. It's really cool. Now, just imagine an AI, a machine, able to draw something like this. Something abstract like this. Not in a photocopy, but something like this. A mind of a machine that wants you to interpret how his, uh, how his mind works. How, 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 he, how it sees the world. It wants to represent, like the strokes, it wants to, uh, the, the details. It's really cool. So, that's basically art is. Now, how the fuck do I get back up the board? Is that it? Yeah, there you go. So, hold on. I need a break here. Uh, I need to drink more of this. Mm. <laughs> it's too sweet. <coughs> That's gross. That's too sweet. I'm gonna take my hot cocoa. Ugh. <laughs> that hot cocoa doesn't taste as good. This is like my my taste buds is overpowering. Mm. It's too much flavor. Ah, see what I did there? Huh. Okay. So, what the fuck? Oh, here we go. So, art is like one different strokes of sorts. The way, the way it was drawn. See the way I drew this? This is how I draw a person. Other than I'm a shitty, I, I can't draw for shit. But this is how I draw a person. This is how I'm interpreting it for you guys. This is how I represent it. See the way I draw the face? Why is the face more detailed than the others? Why this face is more detailed than the body? Why did I make this body so simple, but yet the face a little more detailed than the others? Every every stroke I make is important. There's a reason why I did that. Different strokes. Two, it's how they see the world. How the mind, it's like the mind, it's like a, a window of the mind. Like the window of the mind. You can see the person is giving you a peek. He's lifting up the blinders for you to see his mind works by drawing, by interpreting it on paper to see how his mind works. He wants you to see the way it's represented. Like this, check this out. Like this house. The way I drew the house and the chimney and the windows and the door. Looks like a sad face. And the cloud. Now, why did I draw that? Put that smoke in there. Is it a smoke? Why did I put that chimney? Why did I put in two windows for? Why one door? Why didn't I add an addition? Like, a garage. Why did I drew the way the garage the way it is? Why the fuck did I drew this mailbox? Why did I draw this mailbox with 
this. Why did I draw it red? There's a reason why I did. Is it a symbol? Do I want more attention for this particular part? See, your mind is already detecting the patterns, which we'll discuss in this topic real soon. I hope you're following along. And, see what I say? I don't know what the, oh yeah, window of the mind. You got the different strokes. It's like a window of the mind. And, it's not random. Which we get to here in a little bit. It's, uh, it's some kind of order of an intelligence. Now, if a machine's able to do art, it's just got more human. Which I think is important. I think that's what separates man from beast. Not only do we know how to build fire and extract energy from a particular resource that is fire, or, well, it's a chemical reaction. More like finding a piece of wood, which is a resource, using fire to burn energy to make us feel warm. We're using the firewood to give us heat via fire. That's extracting energy from resource. Animals can't do that. Not that I know of. They can do that. We're going to do even more complicated things like oil. Or methane. Methane. Ah, methane. I forgot all about methane. Which they'll be on step three. Yes, methane. Alright, next page. You got it? Good? We're all good here? Good. Next topic we're going to discuss about the uh, tradition versus logic. Tradition is like the result of something, whereas logic is more like deducing, you know, logic. Tradition is what makes us human versus logic. Tradition is more like uh, something you think that's irrational, that doesn't make logic sense. That's kind of like tradition. You know, like uh, like how we celebrate a birthday every year. Once a year, that's tradition. There's no logic behind it. It's a result of a particular pattern. Which is what I got to right now. So, here's tradition, which is, uh, this is kind of like a formula, but I'll explain it a little better. It's basically a pattern X to result pattern Y. Now, what I mean by that, you look at a particular pattern. Pattern X, okay, it goes to your stimuli, okay, and it does the recalling, the memory, and it goes there. And the result out of that that came out of your mind is, is a result which pops out pattern Y, whatever that may be. That's kind of like tradition. Uh, let's see. Say this is not an example. Uh, okay. How about little Charlie? All right. Dude, here's little Charlie. All right. Here's one person. Kicks in the nads. Ouch! And Charlie falls down. Okay. 
Now, here's Charlie again. And here's another person, unrelated to this guy, who also kicks in the nut, kicks the little, little Charlie in the nuts. Because he saw him do that. And his kid, his child, does the same thing. He's following tradition. He sees Charlie again, all grown up, and he kicks him in the balls. Because it's tradition. And so on and so on. Many generations later, it becomes a tradition of them kicking the balls of someone. They'll make it a holiday. Uh, kick ball holiday. It started a tradition. See, this is pattern Y. Or, see, this is pattern X. He kicks in the balls. Okay. And pattern Y, the result of that, is him kicking someone else. And does the same thing. He says this Y, it becomes a new pattern Y as a result of that. Let's call this XY, so we get confused. It's the Y from the result that's previously from the from a previous pattern to a new pattern X. Which he sees from his mind that he learned. So pattern X Pattern X gets manipulated by in your mind, how it interprets it, the way got what your whatever your stimuli got from from the you know, from the environment, and it spits it back out, it recalls information, spits it back back out to your stimuli, and results into pattern Y. And so on and so on. And it just circles around. Like a cycle. Keeping a tradition. That's that's how it kind of works. Uh, that's it. It's hard to explain. But you will get it. So you'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally get this there, right, Professor. Good job. Now on a machine. So far, AI works by pure logic. There is no tradition in AI. But if you want to make AI more human, you can have it learned by tradition. The AI's stimulus, stimulus, yeah, stimulus, or no, it's not stimulus, that's the money thing. Stimuli learns from this environment. It detects, you know, it, it creates a pattern in its mind. If it sees it again, it recalls and the result as pattern Y. So, pattern X goes to pattern Y. Because it goes into your mind, in your mind, it, you know, it detects all the patterns that's learned previously of other patterns. So there's like a patterns, a patterns, a patterns, a patterns, a patterns from many different eras of time, which you learn throughout. And it goes, bloop. It detects that. You know, it detects a pattern. And it spits out the result out of that. Out of the cloud of sorts. It turns into pattern Y. And you do this over and over again. And it becomes, a, and it, it becomes tradition. There's no logic behind this. It's just... It's basically like copy paste, but paste. Here, actually, it's maybe put this. It's like copy, paste. However, this paste has been pasted by other pastes. All happening in your mind that detected a certain pattern that for some reason that particular pattern kind of gets associated with that other pattern and it goes back out to the environment as a result of pattern Y. I'm explaining this very well as you can see. Mm -hmm. Now if an AI does this, not only it knows logic but it knows, it knows tradition. It becomes more human that way. 
That's goes AI becomes more less machine, but more thinking like us. You see. Oh, this thing's disgusting. I'm not gonna drink that anymore. So let's recap. Tradition. It's not logic. It's uh it's patterns. It's pure patterns. It's patterns that gets associated associated with other patterns that goes back to the environment as a result of pattern X of pattern Y. I'm sure there's a there's a formula, but I am not good at math. Maybe I should I don't know, make my own math. Or maybe there is a math out there, I just haven't learned it yet. And I can explain it a lot better with it. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. This hot cocoa is no longer hot. Mm. Alright. You got it? Any questions? No? No? Good. Now, <coughs> the third act. Randomness. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm saying, I'm telling you that there's no such thing as random. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. What you think is random is not random. Even when you're thinking of a number, that's not random either. You're already putting thought into it before you, you, before you speak the number. Like I'm thinking of the word or letter or number 17. See, that took way too long. So I got to think of a number. And subconsciously, I've already picked the number. But why did I pick that number? See, that's another thing. I didn't pick the number. I might have thought I picked the number 17, but really what happened is, at this certain, as of this certain time, at this certain time, at the moment, what my mind is flowing, at the current time, of all the patterns that's been associated as I'm thinking a number, goes pattern here, and then pattern there, and then pattern there, at this present time, at the very moment, and at that part, that this snapshot, set number seventeen popped out. Let's try an example. So I'm thinking a number really quickly: eight four four seven one six. I'll think it's faster. I'll think even faster by that. Almost super, super, almost random. Uh, 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 let me think. Uh, 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 so I can't do it. Two one two one four four one four one four six six five six five four 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 one four one four four seven one four. I'm saying all the fours. Eight four nine 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 one one two one two one two one two one nine nine one two one two nineteen one two. Uh, twenty one forty six seven thousand over nine thousand eight eighty nine ninety thousand. Four seven seven four one four four three four one four four one three four four one four four three one four one three one two one eight one seven four six five eight seven size eight seven five three oh nine what song four five one two two one two one two one two one 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 two one two one two one two 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 one two one five five six four four seven four six three four 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 three four four three two four three four 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 seven one one two one four see I'm trying to go faster trying to make my things more random as I can I'm trying to go faster that way I'm not time to think. I gotta say numbers like right on the spot. One two one four five six seven one four four one four one four four six seven eleven thousand one seven one seven one seven one seven one one seven one seven four four one four one four one four 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 eight four nine one two four six seven forty two one nineteen thousand seventeen eleven seventeen eleven one nine one one. See, no matter how fast I I try to think. Trying to think as more random as I can. What I just said is not random at all. 
that's just let me recap what I'm doing is at the present time as the snapshot of time the snapshot of time I mean it could be like in a milliseconds it's still a snapshot when I'm thinking that number in that snap particular snapshot of time it could be in nanoseconds but it's still a snapshot of time there's a pattern that's been activated which activated another pattern that's been associated with this pattern which these patterns that's associated another pattern which these patterns got associated and activated another pattern which activated another part of pattern another part of pattern a pattern that's been activated just only by this two patterns and there's another pattern that's been activated from all this at the same time that activated associated with that pattern now now all this snapshot of t right here in milliseconds or nanoseconds all this is happening just to pick a number it's not random it's not random it's it's just it's a you gotta think of it like oh yeah like a snapshot you can like stretch the, the stretch the time of that snapshot you can go from one second into milliseconds into nanoseconds into picoseconds you can just keep stretching stretching stretch stretching all that all all that time and snapshot and picoseconds which in that snapshot in picoseconds all these patterns that's been activated and associated right there to pick the number uh, four and eight and one because you're trying to do it really fast if you're really slow then not as much patterns has been activated and associated there's no really, there's no such thing as random. But with AI, AI can't pick random ones either. But I can we can think it's going random, like we do. We can think of random numbers of something random, like we do. But it's not really random. Capiche? Let's think of the real world, like the universe. Uh, oh, like uh, methane. For instance, it's chemistry, right? It's not. It didn't happen at random. Methane existed out of emergence, because you know one chemical goes to the other, you know, because that's how they interact. And it's not random. Let's see. What what's methane? Is it like? Is it C? Is it CH4? Or is it C4H? Or is it C4? I'm going to look that up real quick. If I make a, a, a dumbass of myself. Uh, my thing. Yeah, I was right. It is CH4. <laughs> hey, that's cool. This is the pattern of it. Okay. CH4. Yeah, I was right. Hey, how about that? All right. You know how I talk about uh, extracting uh, extracting energy from resource that only, uh, as far as we know, only humans can do. Extracting energy from resource the way we do it, like this methane. It's got energy. And how are we going to extract it? We combust. We burn it. With the right mixture of air and, you know, water makes fire, fire. Okay, C4. All right. You combust. Okay. And then, and then, and then the energy, we extract the energy. When we combust it, this energy turns into heat. Which we, you know, help, you know, turn the furnace on. That's gas powered. Turns into heat. So you combust to get energy to extract energy. We extracted what energy? Mostly heat. And then 
you got the byproduct, the leftovers from when we extracted energy, when we combusted. And this leftover is, so go C4, and, uh, and we combusted, which, what did we introduce when we combusted? Uh, oxygen. You know, whatever makes fire. So, when once we extract the energy, its leftovers becomes. Let's see, how does this work? So there's. becomes C. becomes CO. and. Uh, H2O. Right? Because it turns into water, and then the other is like carbon monoxide. And then it's been combusted. It took away. Let's take this away three hydrogen? No. No, it took away two hydrogen. I guess. Two hydrogen gets expulsed. Or, you know, it gets. Uh, how you say, uh, consumed, I think. So that'll be what? H2? <laughs> I'm just, wait, no, hold on a minute. Carbon CH4. Forgot about that. So, I guess H2 is the heat that, that's been combusted into heat, and then, and then a C, and then, the oxygen binds with the carbon, turns into carbon monoxide, and then the oxygen also binds with the other two hydrogen, turning it into water, H2O, water. That's why you want, that's why there's like an exhaust pipe in your furnace, because you want these leftovers to be expelled out. You got the water, it, and it, you know, it turns into water, it drains out of your furnace, and you got the CO, which expels from your from your flue pipe, from the exhaust pipe. So you got the water, it drains, and you got the carbon monoxide to, to poop out there, out of your house. Instead of your inside your house, where you die from carbon monoxide poisoning. And that's my thing. And H2 has been used up for heat. I think that's how it works. Don't quote me on this. I'm just this uh, uh, talking to my ass here. But I think that's the gist of it. All right, that's since it, see all this. It's not random. It's just chemistry. It's like you know opposite, you know uh, cause and effect kind of dealy emergence. Our universe isn't random. How we got here, how we went from not living to living, that ain't random. How the the sun became the sun. That ain't random. Big Bang happened. You know, it got it cooled enough to form hydrogen and the other elements. And some of those elements and gravity, you know, turn into a sun. The sun explodes and creates more elements like iron and uranium and all that junk. All that from that random. But if we get AI to think like us, the way how we think we're random, it'll get more human. So we got for AI to become like us, it needs to understand art and use it. It, uh, it needs to think. It needs the tradition has some kind of tradition. It does. That's the uh, that you know that has nothing to do with logic. It doesn't use logic, but it uses a form of tradition by recognizing patterns of sorts. And that's another part of being human. And then randomness, which is not randomness. And then you get more become human, a human. 
And that's, that's basically the summary of part two. That's not the best explanation, but you'll get the gist of it. Maybe I'll make another more uh, better video that kind of evolves, you know, a little better explanation. Once I figure out some mathematical formula of how uh, for a tradition. Because if I can convert tradition into math, we can apply it to, to the uh, programming for AI. So we got tradition and turn it into some, uh, some mathematical formula, which we can put into the computer and have a program for the AI so it can learn tradition. And maybe from tradition, it can perhaps learn about art. And out of art becomes randomness, which is not random. And all these, all these three, kind of, kind of work together. Not only those two work together, but you can have it have a drive, which you learned from the previous lesson, the drive to extract energy from resources the way we do so it learns all the stuff from previous like this to be more human to have true AI which will be really cool to see and that is end of lesson two my friends part two and if you stuck here long enough and if you're interested eh, Put a subscribe. Subscribe me if you like. I also play video games. I play mostly retro type games. Like Duke Nukem 3. Or Doom. Or or NES games. I play some newer games too. What are games I like? You hit that subscribe button. Put a little ring the bell. Or whatever they, these, <laughs> these other YouTubers say. You know, like a dork. And uh, yeah. That's it for it. Thanks for watching and listening to me. Ta-ta!